Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about noise margins. I wasn't planning on explaining this before, but in the last video, when I was explaining uh, pressure voltage movement, um, I felt the need for this. Um, so let's let's talk about noise margin. And we will talk about the noise margins of our best friend. Yes, we, I call it the best friend. Uh, CMOS inverter so we have so far I think we might have touched these ones too but the two plots that I remember we touched in earlier videos one was for a single transistor one was a current drain to source current with respect to drain to source voltage and it was something like this then we talk about current with respect to gate to source voltage okay it was like this then this is another curve or another plot and I'll get to that. Don't get scared with all these things that I have in the picture. It's pretty simple. So on Y axis we have V out. On X axis we have V in. Okay, so it's not a current. It's output voltage with respect to input voltage. It's an inverter so output voltage is always the flip version of the input voltage. When the input voltage is low, output is 1 because PMOS is on. But and when output vo input voltage is high, then NMOS is on and output voltage is 0. So curve is this and this. In between we have where PMOS and NMOS are both in saturation. So this is like an unstable region, kind of a gray zone. Signal here might be zero, might be considered one, because there is an uncertainty. If you want to be sure that this inverter consider input signal correctly, then this is the low input the maximum value up to this point so if input voltage varies right so think of if input voltage comes because of any here it 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 gets uh, this form right so you can see that okay there's a low voltage and there is a high voltage but there are some vibration swings that are happening um it's not ideal it's not like the input comes always like this and then goes immediately and then go like that's the ideal scenario you, you can have this kind of input and uh, this CMOS inverter is really good in kind of filtering this thing out but it has a range so up to certain voltage it considers what oh, this is actually a low voltage and PMOS turns on as soon as PMOS turns on this is the beauty of CMOS this point goes to VDD that noise kind of reduced Similarly, there is a voltage um, at VDD, of course, if goes to VDD, exact stays at VDD, all this, sorry, input really goes there. Then it's great. I mean, NMOS is on, output is grounded. But what if the voltage kind of goes, let's say VDD is here, sometimes goes above, sometimes goes, no, sometimes goes very low. So there is a range and this is those range of inputs for which output will be zero. This is the range of the inputs for which output will be high. The highest point in this low range is called what I'm calling VI low max. This is the maximum value of the low range. And this is the minimum value of the high range. Books really sometimes confuse you. But that it's pretty simple. My margins are not complicated at all. But let me explain you with this one. What what these points? This voltage and this voltage. What they really mean. So now look at this one. Let's say input changes with respect to time. So our y axis is input voltage. And x axis is with respect to time. So this voltage here. Uh, from 0 to 1 so you can think of it's like from here to here or in other words I should have a better way was for this to this 
and this other voltage is from this to this that's probably be better if i had done as opposed to doing horizontal but you understand that so up to this point this point input other input is here or here or here anywhere between it will be considered the output will be this pink output over for all this it's considered since it's less than this and this is this waveform by the way it's i just copied this one and the pink i drew the new thing on top of it so this this pink is i should call it is pink is output v out okay and this guy is v in so think of this again from his point till this point right all these values are lower than this lower than this so whenever these values because it's are these output will you know and uh, cmos inverter will consider this as zero and pmos is on and output is one so look at this this is that point here is this oh yeah you can see let's let's use this plot so whenever input is this output is one cmos has beautifully generated an output it removed the noise so it suppresses the noise for this signal, input signal, see, input signal goes here, this one. Input signal goes here. What do we do about that? It's lying in the middle between the two lines. So this is 0 or 1. Now this is a problem. Anything here, maybe a particular inverter will take that as 1. Or maybe another inverter consider it just moves. Uh, another inverter might move. There. Another inverter might consider this. Right? And this is a problem. This will this will create a can have can produce a glitch here, but you see that still CMOS is pretty kind of tolerant in this region. Similarly, now beyond this, this, and this, for these voltages, these are here. This will be output will be input it will be considered uh, high so output really drops you see there until this point here which is this point here again it comes into the transition region is might stay zero or it might go to one this is i put dots here like same like this thing it is a potential that it goes high like this and create another glitch there so these, this is really the noise margin, the margins of the noise. You know, with it, this is the margin. Within this, it will not, it will suppress that noise. Within this, it will suppress this noise. But this is kind of the transition. You don't want to, a digital IC design engineers for the digital logic doesn't want to operate here. Now, what happens if the size of these margin is different? Let's take a look at this guy. This one you can see. This is ideal. This is like the scenario we just talked about. Okay. Um, your PMOS is on here. And put a zero. Out and MOS is on here. See both are same. It's a well balanced kind of transfer characteristics. Uh, it, this transition region rise in the middle. And also keep in mind, we want to make the transition as much drastic as possible. We don't want to, it to go like that. That will impact the noise margins too. Input here, even though it changes, it will be considered output will be one. Output here will, even though it make changes, it will be considered zero. 
But what happens if we have it something like this? You see, it's the same thing. But what happened here is this location is gone here. Moved. So this moved. Input maximum can go to VDD. So you can see that our this region is small. This region is pretty big. You notice that? So means that a bigger swing on the input you know, on the zeros. See before it was until here. Now this has gone up. So because this point has gone up. So this point is this point is this. This point is this. So when this point goes here, mean this point goes up, that means our um, our uh, we have a stronger you can say PMOS pull up circuit so our pull up circuit kind of can suppress a bigger noise so during the zero again the time duration is the same here if you look at the time our input is the same with respect to this one but the only difference is before a bigger swing here will go into the transition region now this thing has moved up so we can have the bigger swing on the low side output though are small now this area is small so this suggests that we have pmos or our pull up circuit is much stronger it kind of even for a large input voltage is still kind of able to connect it to the VDD that mean our PMOS strong current um, PMOS are so strong that they very quickly charge the capacity of the output to VDD and a large amount of current flows could be the width of the transistor pretty big compared to NMOS okay so the connection we will talk later on kind of the multiple PMOS are connected together which is also kind of way of large PMOS so the current is high mean the PMOS width is pretty much high but NMOS is that so in this type of transistor if there is a little bigger noise like this here this will have impact here so this has a better noise margin here but overall it's a little disturbed again output is same the only fact as I'm telling you that this can have a bigger margin on this side. What if we make NMOS stronger? NMOS width of the transistor current is much higher than pull down. What happens now? This thing has moved back. So, um, most of the time NMOS can be pretty quickly enabled okay so this point is called the switching threshold of inverter so the switching threshold and moving actually um, uh, because of how how strong NMOS or PMOS are and now in this case we can only spread a small amount of low noise but a high amount of noise so even with this noise it will be able to bring them to zero so that's really when because of the noise in the digital circuits uh, coupling noise or some other noise uh, that signal start changing that or if you design the transistor such that this threshold kind of moves here and there it can start impacting your functionality of them so that is really really important how we design our circuit how um, you know, combination circuits are designed so their noise margins are maximum are balanced and don't create these type of functional glitch problems the problem is when these type of things happen uh, incorrectly zero will become one one becomes zero so yeah that, that's all so on noise margin hope I explain well if you have any question even when I am uh, late in replying, I will eventually reply you. So please, you can send me email. 
um, or uh, send me a message on LinkedIn. Um, and if if I don't read it for some reason, don't reply, please send, um, remind me again. I don't mind you reminding me. Uh, but at least then I will I will reply you. Thank you so much. See you next time.